Hi everyone, this is Panos from NetBiz and welcome to another video of our series Linux for Network Engineers. Today I'm going to show you how to SSH to a Linux box and in this case it's going to be our Raspberry Pi without a password. Okay, uh, so in the previous videos I showed you how to set up your Raspberry Pi and one of the steps if you remember was how to enable SSH. So SSH is the, I would say, now the standard communication, uh, remote communication um, command line uh, for all Linux hosts. And it stands for a secure shell. So it gives you the ability to establish a secure connection between two hosts. In contrary to Telnet, which of course is much older, and uh, establish a connection, but without any encryption. So, um, now, um, what do you want to do in this case, right? You want to connect remotely to this um, Raspberry Pi device here that's on your network. And I just showed you here, showing you here a diagram of how this might look like, right? So you have your laptop over the wireless network to the um, wireless router, and you have your Raspberry Pi plugged in on one of the router's um, switch ports. So, of course, there are, um, there's the I would say a um, basic way to do that and on the Raspberry Pi case is to have um, a, a password for the standard, standard account Pi, let's say. If you haven't changed the password, which you should have, okay, <laughs> changed by now, the uh, standard password is, um, is Pi, uh, the standard login is Pi and the password is Raspberry, right? So let's see how this looks like here. So I'm having here my console, right? I have boot up my Raspberry Pi. I know it's IP because it printed on the screen and I had a monitor plugged in, so I know it's um, uh, 172.31.0.246. And I'm going to say it's right. So I say it's enabled, it gives me a warning message. I say, yes, you can read this later, but if you, are logging in in any of your uh, device, your own network, you shouldn't worry about it too much. And now I put the password, right, for this account, and I'm logged in, okay? So um, straightforward and easy, like any login and password um, uh, combination you ever used, right? So this is fine, but you know, it, it gets cumbersome sometimes, it gets in the way. Um, so if you, especially if you do this very often, if you connect to this device, let's say, several times a day. You have to put your password and login over all the time. Um, or even even more importantly, if you want to write a script that connects, let's say, to a remote machine, right, and connects securely over SSH and runs certain types of commands, then if that script runs automatically, independently, let's say on a schedule, then you're not able, of course, you wouldn't be, wouldn't, wouldn't be able to type the password every time the script uh, runs and needs to do a to the machine, right? So let's see now how we can create this uh, passwordless SSH uh, setup. So I'm going to exit now for now. I'm going to clear the screen. And so how do we do that, right? Here is um, the process. So first we're going to create a private public key pair. So if that's a, a, an RSA type of uh, private public key pair and um, um, that allows you to communicate, connect to the server you want to, in this case the Raspberry Pi, by using only your private key on your machine and the public key on any other machine. I'm going to upload this, the public key, okay, to the Linux host I want to connect to. Then I'm going to SSH without uh, any password, right? So let me show you how you do that. So how do you generate the private public key pair? There's the command SSH key gen. Okay, you just type the command. So you get a prompt here. It tells you that by default, it's gonna save the private key and the public key in this folder here, in your home directory, .sshidrsa, right? So in this case, I'm gonna use a default. I just hit enter here, okay? And then it asks me for a passphrase, okay? So if you're gonna do, be extra secure, Okay, you can also add a password on this um, uh, uh, 
private public key pair. So because in this case, we're going to avoid entering any password when we use this um, key pair. We just hit enter here, so we don't enter any password. Then does some magic. And now, if we see here, if I go to actually to, show, to see the directory, I'm going to do ls minus la. You see here, it created this .ssh directory. If I go into this directory, I can see here I have these two keys. If you want to know how they look like, I'm going to print them for you. Uh, I'm going to delete, delete them afterwards, of course, because I don't want you to have my private and public key. Let's start with the public key. So it looks like this, a string of text. OK, start with SSH-RSA, a string here, then a string of random text looks like. Then at the end, the name of the machine was generated on. And the private key looks like this, OK? Even longer uh, uh, string of random characters uh, that um, you know is going to be used for this communication, right? So two important things here. You have to save the private key somewhere safely on your laptop, of course, your machine. But that's what is the main secure um, aspect of this communication, right? If you lose the private key, then anybody that has a private key can use it to connect to the machine that has allowed um, the private key to connect to, right? So this is what security is based on, OK? And the public key now, the good thing with the public key and with, with this RSA, uh, RSA uh, encryption is that you can put this on any machine, public, private, and whoever, even if somebody gets access to this public key you see here, that doesn't compromise the security, right? Because the public key, when it's installed on a host, uh, then it tells that host that can accept connections from whoever has the private, the corresponding private key, OK? So I'm going to clear this for now. And now, how, do, how can we copy this, this public key now to the, our Raspberry Pi. So this is the command SSH copy ID. So I type it there. Then I put Pi, the user I want to uh, connect to. And then again, the IP of the Raspberry Pi. I hit Enter. So here, it gives you some prompts. So now, for this specific first time I'm using this, I have to put again the password. OK. OK. And it tells me, OK, the key has been copied. Now try to SSH by using this command, SSH pi, OK. So I'm going to do SSH pi 172.31.0.246. And voila. I logged in without inputting any password, right? Um, and that's convenient now, right? Every time I do that, I don't have to use my password. But I have to keep my private key safe again, right? So now let's look. How, what is the information that has been copied on this um, Raspberry Pi, right? So I'm going to do ls minus la again. And I see there's another dot SSH directory here. So I'm going to cd into it. And I see here there's this file called authorized keys, OK? So you can use the command cat authorized keys. And I can see what's in this file. And what's in this file now is this uh, key I just generated. OK, public key that has been copied to this machine. And now, whoever has a private key that I just generated will be able to access to this machine without a password. So um, that's how this works. So two things here. One is that uh, if you want to be even more secure, you can um, use uh, the passphrase that we skipped. <laughs> When I created the, the key with the, uh, this command, OK? Uh, in that case, when you use the key, the, the private key, you will also be asked to enter the passphrase or the password you use. They call it passphrase for some reason. And then the other thing to note is that um, passwordless SSH, even without using a passphrase, is more secure than using a login and a password. And uh, that has to be with to do with cryptographic reasons for there's lots of analysis about online but um you're gonna be even more secure on this if, if, if even if you're gonna be more secure and have the convenience of not using any password it's better to do this process for any host you want to connect to and then once you do it you are good uh good to go uh, that's it for today uh, you will see that in many of these uh, three or four initial videos i'm gonna do some introductory material that don't have to do necessarily with network engineering but more about Linux, 
but I'm setting the ground to um, for future videos where we're going to be talking more about networking related stuff on Linux. Thank you all and uh, have a good weekend. Bye.